Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Sustainable Funding Vlogcast Series for media, educators, creators, and technologists. All brought to you thanks to the generous support of BCIT. I'm Erica Hargreave, your host here, and in this episode we'll be virtually traveling to Italy, where we'll be speaking with Maria Gracia Suriano about her open educational book, Animals of the Great War. Join Maria and I as we talk about digital storytelling, crowdfunding, othering, and free and open access in education. I do apologize in advance that in some spaces Maria's head's cut off. Um, we conducted this interview via Skype video and we've since discovered that that's one of the shortcomings of, of Skype video recordings. Anyhow, please do join us inside. I realized that, that there is a, um, a world of professional professionalities uh, uh, and people who work in this um, uh, different system of funding project and uh, I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in Italy is not so, um, there's not, I mean, there's just one platform, but the, the project on it are not very, very interesting and not interesting uh, for a cultural level. But I, I could um, have experience in a uh, Goteo platform, for example. There's such a, a, an attention on a social problem, on education, on gender, and uh, on projects related to the real problem uh, in this real world, which is a world not so, not so good to live. And uh, the fact that people uh, want give their donation, they support to such kind of project. Uh, this is very interesting. And uh, I'd like to be part of this different economy, uh, this social economy. Well, th this is important. Uh, I think it would be important. I don't know how, uh, to, to what extent um, it could work in this uh, over capitalist world, but maybe this social economy could save us some. An independent historian. I'm specializing in uh, history of Europe. In specific, uh, my focus is on identities, cultures, and borders, and the way to cross them. Currently, I, I'm in charge of teacher training program at the Associ uh, Cultural Association C, which is a uh, an association I co-founder. And um, now we, we design um, program uh, seminars and conference for teachers who teach uh, histories. Um, this is uh, an activity mainly based on public financial sources. So it's very hard to do this job in Italy, actually, because uh, public financial uh, system is very scarce. So I do also other works. Uh, as copy editor, translator, yoga teacher, and so on. <laughs> so that, that's it. That's a good mix. <laughs> the Animals in the Great War is a, an educational tool, mm -hmm. and it's a, in fact an ebook addressed mainly to educators, history teachers, and uh, secondary school students, and uh, shows or. Uh, well, yes, I try to show a, a different approach to the Great War. Uh, to be more specific, um, the aim is to study uh, an epoch-making event as the First World War uh, by taking into account subjects 
in this case, animals or, take, or took part in the war, uh, generally excluded from uh, um, historiographic analysis and then not mentioned in school books. So I thought when I start working to this project that would be interesting for students have another perspective because um, in secondary school, at least in Italy, I, I don't have um, a clear vision of the other system. Uh, study history uh, could be very boring, just a sort of uh, event uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the past. So um, I, I, I thought that if we start to consider animals in this case, um, a subject of history, and this is the theoretical point in uh, to this and this specific, or specific, I don't know. Well, uh, pro-animal uh, militancy. Yeah, uh, yeah pro-animal militancy. Um, a subject of history, uh, I mean, subject who have a biographies to tell us, um, maybe uh, we could study history uh, from their point of view. In the case of war, the point of view of animals allows us to um, making a very international analysis of the event, because as I show in the e-book, we have on in Europe, but all, in all the uh, battlefields, animals from all over the world. And animals are alien to nationalism and they cross borders. Uh, so this is, uh, for me, a point of interest and a good, good key, key of um, uh, to start a conversation on this, on this matter. And uh, the other thing that could be interested in education um, is that those excluded subject uh, are able to arouse um, empathy. And empathy makes possible to open eyes and mind on otherness, mm -hmm. uh, promoting that critical thinking uh, that should be uh, one of the main uh, educational goals. So uh, this is uh, the, the project in, in, uh, in general and the theoretical inspiration uh, behind them. it. Yes, and yeah. that's it. I, I, I love I love that that approach to teaching about um, about about World War One. Um, my um, well, in two parts. Um, one, my I, I think about my nieces and nephews, and mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Like anything to do with animals, it would instantly kind of yeah, wake of interest, their curiosity yeah. and their their interest, and uh, uh, um, you know, in a in a subject of history. Um, uh, but then I also like, you know, I, I think it's so important, um, the exploration of, as you, you called it, the otherness at the moment mm -hmm. and yeah. sort of being the cult cultural understanding through that. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, this is important. And yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah I, I always think this, um, there's this, this book I mentioned in the Animals in the Great War, um, this, uh, for, for, it's by a, a and British writer, Tommy mm -hmm. Sark is the title. And uh, yeah, this thing that a soldier, uh, soldier is uh, as conscious of nationalism. And he, he, in his memories, he spoke about him as a British soldier uh, and about the cat and uh, the dog as a, a German dog. And they and they met together and man, in no man's land. And this is important uh, even today, even if uh, we we use other subject uh, uh, instead of animals, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. all, all the otherness possible. And uh, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that image. Sort of the the makeup of the team behind the project was it. Uh, did you was it entirely you or did you have other people that were helping you when you when you created no, we uh, um, we work on the project in two 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 person so mm -hmm. a small team and 
me, I did the historical and cytographic and bibliographical research, and then I wrote uh, the ebook. And my colleague, which is also the president of our association, uh, she selected all the photos that we used into ebook, and we used also to make uh, the videos uh, we made to to do our um, crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she edited the ebook. Uh, yes, um, it's very tiny, tiny team. It would be great if we had uh, with us uh, also someone expert in uh, digital communication and uh, fund raising campaign, raising campaign, because we we lack so much this this part of um, expertise. Yeah, that's really. Um... Uh, it's it's a lot of work um, yeah. doing a funding campaign. Was that your first step, sort of your iteration for funding on the project? Well, we um, we participate in an international competition. Mm -hmm. It was called the Europeana uh, Strike Match for Education, a mm -hmm. competition promoted by the Europeana Foundation. And uh, in partnership with uh, Gotio, which is a um, Spanish civic crowdfunding uh, platform. Mm -hmm. So at the first step, we present our project. The requirement to participate was the use of uh, materials uh, free to access uh, and use um, available through the Europeana network. And in fact, we designed a project based mainly on the materials uh, hauled into the database Europeana 1914-1918, which is this database that collects all materials um, from all over Europe uh, into, into this database dedicated to the First World War. And it's materials, material related above all to uh, daily life. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's not military history or uh, something uh, like this or institutional material, but material from the daily life. So we prepare our uh, project. And then once the project uh, um, was selected, uh, we started this uh, crowdfunding campaign. The Great War was the last cavalry war, but the enlisted animals were many more. There were mules and donkeys for carriage. Pigeons for espionage and communications. Dogs for logistic and recovery operations. And last but not least, cats as Harat Anders and mascots as well. Animals in the Great War, an ebook for free download for secondary school students and teachers. During this campaign, well, uh, uh, each donation we have raised through the platform, through Goteo platform, uh, um, have been Dupl uh, duplicate, yes, uh, with an, uh, um, uh, uh, an equal donation from Europeana. So this is, was the um, interesting, <laughs> interesting thing, but the, all the process of crowdfunding was very, very stressful <laughs> and uh, even frustrating because um, we were not really prepared. Um, yeah, uh, it, it was not clear enough uh, for me what we have to do. So we started doing this video to 
to tell people our project. And then we socialize it through Facebook and Twitter and through the Goteo platform and through, uh, through Europeana, Europeana social network. At the end, we, we achieved our goal, but it was really oh. stressful. And with uh, different skills, I'm sure we would, uh, we, yes, we would do better, yes. Uh, do you mind my asking how much you were able to, to raise for? To, we, for did we raised 3,500 euro, which was our first step in yeah. a, in a, um, a project um, uh, we we um, we ran for seven thousand euro, but we we reached the uh, uh, an half, but we, we, which that was enough, but yeah, not the excellence for us. But anyway, well, well done. That's uh, that's it's it's hard work um, organizing such a campaign. So so congratulations. Um, oh, thank you. Is that is that the first time you've done a crowdfunding campaign for a project? Yes, absolutely the first time because uh, in Italy is not uh, so much um, well used it um, because cultural projects are mainly uh, sponsored and financed by a public institution, local mm -hmm. or at national level, and uh, yes. Um, Donation is not uh, uh, is not so well, so welcome. So uh, yeah, <laughs> and it was what, the first time. Yeah, what did you find uh, during the campaign? What what seemed to work for you in order to get people to sort of um, make that step to to donate? Well, uh, we didn't enough really, but I, I am sure that the using um, vintage photo in our video uh, was uh, the, the, the most interesting thing. In fact, we have a lot of support from people who, who loved footage and uh, f film and uh, photos from the, uh, well, uh, 19th century, the, the early uh, 20th century, and mm -hmm. uh, and the use of um, archive material. We we well try, but unsuccessfully, uh, to involve in this project some mm, animal association uh, mm -hmm. or so on, but it doesn't work. This it doesn't work really. Um, and just, just, just because there wasn't anybody interested at the time, or, or, or. Well, I, I, I think because we we were a, a small, uh, a small association with a, a project uh, sponsored by, um, in this case, by an, an international, a European mm -hmm. institution, and. Uh, uh, it, it wasn't interesting for the national group to be into this. Having done a crowdfunding campaign once now for for um, for a project of yours, is that something you'd explore doing again if you had the right project? Yes, I, I, I'll do for sure. But I, I'll prepare a, a project more international based, mm -hmm. and I will looking for international partners mm -hmm. because I understand that this kind, this uh, funding model, uh, it doesn't work really well on uh, the Italian public. So the better thing is to open the, <laughs> the perspective and uh, try to do better with something else. And um, yeah, I'll do it again, but with uh, international partners. And uh, building in advance a network of uh, specific skills and people with specific skills on fundraising and digital communication. This is a, a point because I'm sure that those skills I don't have, I'm trying to, to learn, but I don't have those skills and uh, with, they, they will make the difference in this mm -hmm. uh, uh, in this campaign, in this project, I mean. 
Yeah, absolutely. The project that you were building, um, it's entirely open educational, is, is it not? Or is there yeah. specs that are free to access and use, but, no, but no. not? No, no, it's all open access and free to use, but only for educational purposes, mm -hmm. not, commercial, yeah. not commercial. In fact, if you want to use something to make it, um, I don't know, uh, a performance and people have to pay to see mm -hmm. that performance you can't use it okay yeah okay yeah. So, that, uh, so, so free materials for free educational purposes yeah so in in that scenario i uh, just out of curiosity um is that something where you know if there's a commercial component person that wants to use it have you thought about having a pay structure for somebody who wanted to use it commercially or no well, I, I, I can because in my in this case, this project uh, specific uh, for five years is mm -hmm. under the um, the rights are of a European Foundation, and okay. uh, for five years it has to be uh, free access and absolutely absolutely free to use. Uh, in the future, yeah, after this years. Uh, I have other three years. I have to re-manage this work because uh, um, there are a lot of things I, I wanna uh, I wanna deepen uh, and uh, and so maybe it would be possible uh, restructure it in different way. Also because there are a lot of materials in the third chapter of the ebook, the multimedia uh, guide. We enlisted all the material uh, free to access, we mm -hmm. use it to the project and that could be reused. And at least there's not um, all the uh, beautiful, beautiful images from the Imperial War Museum because they are, um, they, they are not copyright free. So uh, it was uh, not useful in this case, um, at least that, but, uh, the, it's very valuable uh, materials and uh, has to be used uh, so, some way. So with an investment, of course, because uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to do something with that material, we have to pay it for. I think that that culture has to be free. So mm -hmm. it's important that uh, information materials uh, um, could arrive to people and be accessible and uh, the decision to uh, realize the project completely free addressed to teachers and students mainly uh, came uh, came for a personal experience because um, as a teacher trainer I, I often work with teachers and the biggest problem is that they don't have money to uh, well to follow seminars to buy books to uh, anyway so and i understand this problem so why don't give them something uh, something valuable um, and uh, uh, interesting and new and even for free and the same for the student uh, because uh, when when this uh, project well started, it was well five years ago. I edited a journal, an historical journal, dedicated to an, an issue dedicated to women and in the First World War, and mm -hmm. I decided to not to not write not write an essay on women, and just I put into this uh, journal. Uh, but, um, a, a list of book, a, a bibliography dedicated to animals in the world. Mm -hmm. And then during a presentation, I had in front of me a huge, a huge room and this uh, fantastic uh, building in uh, Piacenza, which is a, a 16th century uh, building this huge, huge uh, room with 500, 
500 secondary school students and I present my, uh, my, my project and they were silent, interested, and in the afternoon and the day after, they reached me through Facebook. They asked for my email and, uh, oh, my, oh. Sorry, my door behind me, there is, um, it's, uh, We'll kill you. <laughs> no, it came off its hinges and I haven't put it back, but okay. in the meantime, while we were talking, my cat decided to creep underneath it. <laughs> and so I don't know what she was doing back there, but in, when she came out, she, uh, <laughs> yes, it she put it down. <laughs> yes. So, and they were so interested in asking me for other materials, other information about this topic. And I said, why don't give them something they can use and they can find uh, online? All the stuff, uh, the, the, the photo, the um, footage uh, of British Pate, uh, they are all, all very interesting for for uh, for students. Yeah, yeah, for this millennial students. I mean, so, uh, maybe we were different. We we have different interests in our studies. I don't know when we were teenagers, but. Uh, this these young students nowadays they they are all uh, they they live online and those platforms and they need uh, visual information constantly mm -hmm. and uh, so so those are the reason why I decide to do this for free uh, to realize a product which is free and uh, I I'd like to to have other occasion to do something uh, like this uh, uh, again, because uh, it's important culture has to be free at, at each level, but above all in uh, uh, at, at school level, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. many people uh, have no possibility to continue after the school. Yeah. So for more, for more, yeah, much more people, made the school, maybe the high school, and then they stop their their standards. So uh, it's important if they have some something to think on, something different than the, the school books. Yeah, yeah, that's it's uh, well, it's, it's wonderful what you've what you've been building and creating, and and it, it as you say, it's so important and. I think, um, I mean, myself personally, I, I believe that when you're telling a story too, it, it just opens, like it, it opens somebody's mind up in such a different way to, yeah. and yeah, and I could just, I could just see my, I'm, my, my um, eldest niece in particular is just fascinated by animals. So I'm yeah, just, yeah, I imagine, oh, well, I her diving into that book and yeah, she would, she would be, yeah. Just, just totally enthralled. <laughs> I'm sure we'd be serenaded with stories of it at dinner, you know. In the book, you could find some some stories that are uh, interesting, in my opinion, and uh, emotional also uh, of, the, of those pigeons uh, I love so much because our our town has full of pigeons, and we are used to think about. Uh, those animals as something disturbing and dirty, and uh, and instead, no, they they did looking at those uh, pigeons in the wharves. Uh, they did, they did a lot of thing, a lot of interesting thing, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, very interesting would be to. Uh, Reconstruct some stories of pigeons uh, uh, used in espionage with the little. Uh, um, machine to to take pictures uh, mm -hmm. and uh, th this is interesting uh, maybe it could be interesting as a subject for a story so oh, absolutely were you able to fund the entire book from your, um crowdfunding campaign or did you did you access other funds as well no we we didn't access uh, other funding and no, we didn't cover all the cost of the book because mm -hmm. I and my colleague, we work for free. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the, 
the, the all amount of the crowdfunding campaign goes to the translator because uh -huh. I, I was so 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 tired and I had no time to write down it in English and then mm -hmm. give the book for a proofreading, which would be uh, well less expensive. So I, I, I ask a translator to translate all the all the all the ebook. So it has um, a huge cost mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the English version. Now, obviously, you know it's not sustainable to be always putting in all your own work for free. Exactly. So have you, have you, have you explored, um, have you started to explore ways that if you, when you do another book, um, how you might make the, the funding, like create a more sustainable funding um, sort of plan well, behind it? Well, I, I like, I, I, well, now uh, currently I'm, I'm, I'm writing a second book on nonviolence. The keywords is nonviolence. Mm -hmm. And this on the female is a known hero too. And, uh, um, well, uh, no founding uh, find until now, until now. But um, I, I'd like in future uh, to, well, to sell the idea mm -hmm. because the ebook it's a good stuff I mean it's a good stuff for me because I'm used to write uh, and but it's not enough as a mean uh, as a tool of communication in this digital world so I'd like to uh, develop my idea in through other media, uh, but I, I'm not able <laughs> to do it myself. So I should um, I should sell this idea or share the idea with some with someone who can do that, and maybe with a, a, a bigger project, not merely an ebook, uh, could be easier. Or not, mm -hmm. but maybe it could be easier uh, find their financial support, real financial support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you do you have an do you have an idea of where that real financial support would come from, or or not, or you haven't sort of started to explore that yet? Yeah, I have to explore that yet because um, well, th this is a cultural a cultural gap because I am still um. Well, uh, um, I, 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 well, I think that uh, those financial support could come from institution, because mm -hmm. this is my experience. Mm -hmm. But those institution uh, can't help anymore, because there's nothing uh, in a public institution in Italy for culture. And so maybe, maybe uh, there are other companies, foundation, or even private companies that could invest on a cultural, uh, on a cultural project. And this mm -hmm. is a question for me. Uh, do companies uh, invest on cultural project? Yeah, because I don't know, I, 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 I'm not able uh, to, at this stage, to to tie this this to reality culture companies yeah. and money and, <laughs> and so on. yeah so hopefully when we start to put up all the interviews we've been doing and um we make that resource accessible to everybody mm -hmm. hope some of those questions will get answered in there right well, now with with what we're finding um, with our web series it I looks like there are some cultural organizations that mm -hmm. Would be that would be interested in coming on board as partners, mm -hmm. and so still at the very early stages of looking at what that would look like. But um, yeah, because I mean, it's it's that uh, there are so many important stories out there to tell, especially mm -hmm. around cultural things, and especially right now in history. I think, yeah. uh, and. Uh, and I don't know about Italian TV, but I know sort of TV in North America. Um, 
unfortunately in Canada, we've really followed the U.S. model where we tend to dumb things down a lot and over sensationalize things. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's not, you know, it, 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 it's not those pieces that really get to the heart of a story or to teach, you know, the cultural yeah. understanding and yeah. Yeah. So I'm determined right now to find <laughs> <laughs> like when I, um, it's uh, cause yeah. Yeah. The kind of stories you're talking about are so valuable. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think so. I'm very grateful uh, because I, I'm, well, uh, I'm a, well, uh, beside the difficulties and uh, the lack of strategies, but uh, I still think that a, a good idea uh, will find will find uh, its own way to go to go far and animals in the great world in this in this english version is confirming it in italian version so and so because i i i have a lot of teachers that ask for the book and uh, then download it and but I didn't have feedback. Instead, from teachers from all over the world, uh, Australia, Poland, uh, United States, Canada, uh, even China, I had a lot of contact from uh, people who, uh, who used this, this, this instrument. Uh, I mean, so uh, it doesn't help to pay rent, but it's very uh, anyway uh, it encourages us to to go to go ahead <laughs> so then that's it oh that's wonderful uh are there things that you've learned from this project that you'll carry forward into the future well uh, well uh, i have learned that yes to to start a project like this well with a cultural subject and uh, enter into a crowdfunding, uh, well, uh, crowdfunding campaign without an organization in terms of a, a network that could help in uh, uh, digital communication or in uh, fundraising. It's just naive so i wouldn't do again this uh, this mistake because uh, next time i will be prepared on this uh, on, on this matter because i think that could be used then um, i realized that that there is a, a world of professional professionalities uh, uh, and people who work in this uh, uh, different system of founding project and uh, I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in Italy is not so, um, there's not, I mean there's just one platform but the, the project on it are not very very interesting and not interesting uh, for a cultural level but I, I could um, have experience in uh, Goteo platform for example there's such a, an attention on a social problem, on education, on gender, and on projects related to the real problem uh, in this real world, which is a world not so not so good to live. And uh, the fact that people uh, want give their donation, they support to such kind of project. Uh, this is very interesting, and uh, I'd like to be part of this different economy, uh, this social economy. Well, th this is important, uh, and I think it would be important. I don't know how, uh, to, to what extent um, it could work in this uh, over capitalist world but maybe this social economy could save us some save us as a cultural oh yeah you have a cat i have a dog <laughs> yeah, yeah. <This> is the <laughs> <Hey Bella. laughs> 
Uh, yes, blue eyes. Yeah. Uh, she has, um, I think they're golden, actually. Yeah, they're copper. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it would be interesting, but uh, um, you should be prepared, prepared to, to uh, a good idea. It's important, but it's not enough to under successful in this, uh, 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 well, in this social uh, economy uh, system. So it would be nice uh, and it would be important also uh, work on it better. So I learned this, uh, some, some more skills in digital communication and fundraising, and uh, <laughs> I will repeat it, but, um, that's that's it. That's oh, it's, you've learned a lot. It's and, and <laughs> really good advice too for other people who are sort of um, thinking of delving into such a campaign. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Sustainable Funding Blogcast series. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.